Good morning, you guys. Today we're going to look at section 4.7, Transformations of Quadratic Graphs. Up to this point, we've worked primarily with standard form and factored form. Um, today we're going to introduce vertex form. Obviously, the nice thing about vertex form is our vertex is very readily available, and it's always the coordinates h, k. Uh, if we can ever get it in this form, it's going to make our lives graphing a lot easier because we already know the vertex is h, k. And we know our axis of symmetry is x equals h. So something to keep in mind as we move forward here. But today, we're going to look at problems going from standard form to vertex form. All right. So first things first, <clears throat> we have this problem here. Okay. We're going to use the process called completing the square. We did it a couple days ago. But the idea is we want to keep y by itself. So what we're going to do. When we look at this problem, we are going to, just like before, take out the two in front, okay? The one catches, I'm gonna rewrite my equation just like this, all right? And you'll see why in a second, okay? So it's the exact same thing, it's just we space it out differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the two because I don't want a coefficient in front when I am doing complete the square. Okay? So the question is, how am I going to complete the square and what number needs to go in the parentheses to make it happen? Well, just like before, we do half of b squared. What's negative 6 divided by 2? That's negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So I need to add 9 to complete the square. The only catch is... It's not just a 9. What is 2 times 9? Well, it's 18. Well, if I added 18 to this side, I'm going to need to subtract 18 just to keep my equation balanced. Okay? After you do that, then it's a simple factor from here. So we have x minus 3 squared plus a negative 1. And that is your final answer. If it ever asks for the vertex, you know your vertex is going to be 3, negative 1. You can also tell our a value is positive, so this parabola opens up. But that's kind of the gist of putting things in vertex form. Okay. We also should be able to work backwards. So given a graph, how can we work backwards? Well, we know our starting point, you guys, is always y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So really similar to questions before on your homework where we're working with standard and factored form. But now, instead of plugging in our intercepts, what we're going to plug in the points we know. So we know 13 is a y value, and we know negative 4 is an x value. We also know that uh, negative 2 is my k, and we know that negative 1 is my h value. So if we're subtracting a negative 1, it's going to be plus 1 squared. And if you notice, the only thing we're looking for in our equation is that a value. So we just have to solve like normal. We wind up with 13 equals a times negative 3 squared is 9 minus I add 2 to both sides, I get 15, 9a, and then obviously, you guys, we'd want to reduce here when we divide by 9. 3 comes out of both of those, so we wind up with 5 thirds is my a value. So my equation is y equals 5 thirds x plus 1 squared minus 2. As we continue on here, um, looking at our <coughs> excuse me calculator, I have kind of some scenarios set up for you so you can kind of take a peek at things. You don't need to, to graph all these to see. But if we look, we have three different kind of cases of our h value, our k value, and our a value. If we notice in each of these, the blue one is obviously going to be that top equation, the y equals x squared, our parent function. And then x plus 2 squared and y, or x minus 4 squared. If you notice, uh, the red one is going to be the second one in. 
If we have x plus 2, our graph actually moved to the left too. The black one, x minus 4 moves to the right 4. So you can kind of see these cases as we add 4, and it's not in parentheses with the x, it moves up 4, down 5. With the case of the a value, if it's a number bigger than 1, it's going to be a tighter curve. If, if it's a fraction less than 1, it's going to be a wider curve. And again, just like before, if a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens downward. All right. So you can draw all these conclusions about the graph based on simply the equation. And you don't have to graph anymore, which is kind of nice. So kind of keep that up there in terms of things. If I was just to ask you not even to graph this problem. So I don't want you to graph. I just want you to tell me the translations from the parent function y equals x squared. So how do these two functions differ from each other visually? Well, number one, I see that you have x plus 3 in your parentheses. Well, what does that mean? If I look at case 1 above, all right, if I'm looking at this case up here, I understand that when I have x plus 2, it moved left 2. If I have x plus 3, I know my graph is going to move left 3 up center. Okay, our second scenario, we have this minus 4. Well, looking at case 2, I know that if I add 4, it moves up 4. Minus 5, it moves down 5. So in this case, it will move down 4. Okay, and then the very last question, we're obviously using our a value to figure this out. I notice the 2 out front. So what does that mean in terms of the curve? of the parabola. Well, I know it's going to be, typically we're going to use a narrower and wider curve. Okay, Or you could say it uh, stretches vertically versus flattens vertically. <laughs> typically most students like to use narrower. So those are the three transformations from the parent function. Left three, down four, narrower. Alright, uh, if you have any questions feel free to you know ask me in class. As far as things go, our homework's on the bottom. Make sure to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, domain range, and whether our graph opens up or down for 12 through 18. Find the vertex, x and y intercepts, domain and range, and additional points, if need be, on 26 through 32. And then obviously you have this last set of problems. Hopefully you have enough time in class today to finish. Um, but yeah, we can ask questions tomorrow uh, on our review day.